A salary is a drug that an employer gives you to forget your dreams. This is something that a lot of people don't realize. And you can see it reflect reflectively because 99% of the world, I would say, is employee or employees. And so the question that I had or say that Kirby and I probably had at the beginning of our journey was, how are people making way more money than the average person? And that's what got me on my financial journey and started thinking about money differently. But it's incredible what you can learn and see the more you advance down your financial path and realize that there's so much money to be made and people are out here literally making hundreds of thousands and millions a month. But the question is, how do you get there and what is required to get there? Yeah, and I mean, first, let me give this caveat. This is not a channel that's telling people, oh, quit your job and go make, you can make the money yourself. You know, if you get to that level and you want to do that, that's fine. That's great. We're not here bashing people that have jobs. What this channel is about is have your job, which is fine, but find other ways to make income that eventually, if the inevitable happen either you get to retirement age or you get fired you're not in financial destitute moving forward that's the purpose of the channel nothing else we, we're not it's not a you know get rich quick scheme channel or hey i'm you know i'm bringing in you know a hundred thousand dollars a month you should be like me and quit your job right but let's just unpack this for a minute Let's say I get a new job. Average average household income in America is what about sixty, seventy thousand, right? So let's just let's just say we just stick to one person. Bam, I get a job. I use Florida because I live in Florida. I get a job. I'm making say sixty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars a month. I mean, Alex, you could do the quick math on that. So my take home pay, I mean, yes, yeah, sixty thousand a year, not a month. No, hell no, <laughs> a year. So sixty thousand dollars of it's about I do some quick math exactly here. Sorry. Thirty eight hundred maybe four four grand a, a month. So yeah, so about thirty seven. So your take home is about thirty seven, thirty seven a month. That's just taking out and again we use in Florida, that's just taking out, you know, thirty seven. I mean, just taking out federal taxes. We not even added in all the other crap that can go along with it. $3,700 a month. Just the average one bedroom in my area is about what? About sixteen to $1,800 a month, right? So sixteen to eighteen. dollars Now, that's, you paying the rent for that. And then I'm just doing the math right here while I'm talking to you. So I didn't like pre, pre game it. And then let's say you got a car payment, average car payment. Now I know they're saying it's about a thousand, but let's just say you had your car for a while. So let's just say, let's go 800 minus 800. So that leaves you with a thousand dollars left. And then you still got, you know, utilities, you still got car insurance and you still got food and, and what have you. So now remember at the beginning of this, I didn't factor in health insurance, that they take out so 3700 won't be your take home pay especially when you pay you know five to six hundred dollars a month for health care then the you know 401k if it's a four percent match that's another four percent gone out of your check so really in all the likelihood you're bringing in about three thousand three thousand twenty nine twenty eight hundred dollars a month just the bare necessities the bare necessities of life ain't no extra going out or nothing you're sitting there at zero or negative money. That's with $60,000. But what people usually do is, you know, you get a new job, you know, you upgrade the car, you upgrade the place where you live at. But we just gonna stick with these numbers. So if you put in four, just 4% of your paycheck away in a 401k or what have you, you don't have any extra money to do anything else. But you didn't. You had these obligations, rent, and everything that we talked about. So once you get paid, and then you probably you get paid on a Friday, you broke on Monday. You have to go back to work just to maintain those payments every month. So now you're just 
really a slave to the system and you're just working, working just to survive. So now anything, your big hopes and dreams, the only thing you can hope and dream for is promotions to make more money. And then you're going to add more, you know, financial obligation to yourself. So you're, you're never going to reach the big dreams you had when you was a kid. Oh, I wanted to have this much money, or I wanted to be able to do this. I wanted to be able to travel, you know, what have you, you know, you know, all the crazy ideas people have. And then it went from, hey, I had these big plans. When I get a job, when I get into corporate America, I'm going to do this. And then reality hits for the cost to live, just to live that lifestyle that all the other dreams are forgetting, forgot about because only thing you're worried about now is just getting to work and getting through that two weeks just to have enough money to cover your uh, monthly financial obligations. So you forgot about the dream altogether. But Alex, I know you're going to put another spin on this, but go ahead. Yeah. It's this this is like something that I think that a lot of people should think to themselves about, because a lot of people seem to believe that. The only way you can make money is get a good job and that's it for you, and that all the people that make a lot of money, they just got lucky somehow. And it's not true at all. It's far from true. The The people that make a lot of money. Took time to think to themselves, you know, how can I get out of this rat race and apply themselves to endeavors that got them out of that? But you have to apply yourself and the get rich quick mentality is so popular amongst people that have that same thought process of the only way to make money is being an employee. So they think that the only way to get rich as well is, you know, you have to hit the lottery or you have to do something illegal. And the truth of it is. It's not even complicated, you there could because of the the access to opportunities that we have here and what i'm really talking about is like the internet the internet alone can give you so much access to you know just ebay facebook marketplace amazon fba robin hood that's that's like the most dumbified investing application there is out there i mean it's so basic and so easy for someone to just use that. And if someone just took time to at least study a little bit on stocks and research, they could apply that to learning on Robinhood. And then, you know, the more skilled you get investing in stocks, you can upgrade to bigger platforms. But it's like the tools are there for everybody. But it's just you have to use them and people don't use them. They, they just rather go to work, come home and withdraw from everything and so yeah mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead you know go ahead you you just I, i'm just going to uh, add on to your point but go ahead I'll, I'll finish up yeah no i mean i just think that you know i had seen a video what really got me thinking on this was i had seen a video from i think his name was luke belmar i think that's the the youtuber but uh, he talks a little bit on like investing or a lot of it on investing and stuff like that and uh, starting a business. And um, for him, obviously, he's been able to reach, you know, multi millions and all that. But the he was speaking to like his students and he was saying like, OK, cool, like, great, you got to 10,000 a day or whatever. But then and so like him mentioning that, I'm like, well, damn, there's people out there that are literally making way more beyond that and 10,000 a day is like you made it to most people so it's not I'm not trying to set a far out of reach goal for people listening to this but like it's to realize that the possibility of you actually achieving that is out there and you just have to apply yourself and go day by day trying to reach that goal I mean I would say you know I don't for you and I, I don't think we're close to half a million a month, but, you know, we don't think it's impossible either, you know? So it's just a matter of continuing to use the tools that are actually out there and build yourself. But you were going to say something, so go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to add on to that. And and it's going back to the job sector about employers. Um, the employers are, are never going to give you those 
accessing tools to make yourself better than what they are paying you. So, I mean, again, of course, we talked about you can go get raises and things like that. But again, life creep happens, inflation happens, as we've seen over the past couple of years. But the job is never going to pay you more that you have an excess of or an excess of. So, you know, they're going to pay you just enough to barely cover your minimums. And of course, half of that reason is because of life creep. People bring their lifestyle up to their income. They do it on purpose all the time and they don't even realize what happened. Uh, you know, you see the person get a new promotion and then they have to go buy a new house or to get a promotion and they got to go buy a new car or they'll give themselves excuse to say, oh, I got to buy this because this is what other people, what other people are doing. And then, you know, combined with, you know, the, the amount that companies pay you, you're never going to have access in, in excess of. So, you know, your lifestyle is never going to be, you know, it costs you $50,000 a year to live. And then the job's paying you, you know, $150,000. they are going to pay you enough that you're broke by the end of the first week. So you got to sit there and work harder, work harder. Because if they paid you all this excess of, then you can actually make a decision to say, oh, I got savings. I can go invest it or I can go create something else. They don't want you to create something else. They want you to have just enough to make you satisfied that you will keep coming to work every day or just enough that you're barely making it, but you know, it don't give you the time and opportunity to search for other opportunities because you don't have that money or that wiggle room to, you know, venture out on other adventures or endeavors or look other places because you need that check to come every 14 days or every two weeks, just so you can maintain the lifestyle you have. Because usually people, most of America, if you missing, if you miss a paycheck, you know, you, you send yourself back a month, a month and a half. So that is a big dynamic of it. And when people don't have the excess money to do it, because that's what everybody thinks, oh, I need to have the money to go invest. But the thing is, is why you don't have the money and you're working to try to build that capital to do investing stuff is this is going back to Alex's point of this is when you need to be researching, researching, and that'll keep you motivated to change different instances in your life to bring down the cost of living so you can have uh, funds and stuff like that to invest so you can move on to other journeys. And if you keep the job, great. But now you know you have another access to capital and access to funds and cash flow. Yeah. And I mean, I think like people that have reached, say, a high position in their workplace where they are director regional and they're making uh, 130, 150,000, they believe that like, OK, that, that's the top of the line where they can get to. And I just think that people. They settle for too little. And I think that everyone, if they applied themselves the same way they apply themselves at work, but out of work in their own life and something that they're doing on their own investing starting a business whatever that they would be able to see more results out of that than what an employer can give them because an employer is going to basically limit how much you can make i mean you would have to be you know ceo of a large corporation to actually see millions coming in and that's still going to get taxed at a federal and possibly at a state you know rate which would take half so it's you know everything works differently when the the income works differently and i like how people use warren buffett as an example that the ceo of coca-cola makes x amount of millions but then he's taxed and then warren buffett owns 10 percent of coca-cola and you know the amount he sees is way more than the the ceo with all that being said though guys if you like the video hit the like button uh share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one